All right, what's up, everybody? Connor Ferguson here from Always Race Day. We're about to uh, get locked and loaded into episode uh, number 176. We're talking dirt. Uh, really hot start to the season at Knoxville. I uh, got an eye-opening stat that we want to talk about of a couple of World of Outlaws drivers and uh, what that season's been like so far today, uh, or so far this year. Uh, and then some uh, big races coming up for the weekend. So uh, join us on the latest episode. Appreciate you all for tuning in. And uh, big shout out to the fine folks at the Carl Auto Group for being the presenting sponsor uh, of our show here today. So thanks again uh, to them and uh, enjoy, guys. <laughs> You guys know who I am, obviously. Uh, Damon Helgevald is back. Uh, he's a big hotshot bowling coach, also a motorsport expert. Uh, and you just you told me you landed a five star. So, uh, sure don't, know, right? don't know about landing a five star. We're talking to five stars, if that counts for anything. I think so. I think it should. Well, well you gotta be you gotta be we'll, in the room to have a chance, right? Well, that's what they say. You at least gotta show up at the dance to be a part of the dance, something like that. Absolutely. How's uh, how's that been for you? Are you doing you doing all right? Yeah, no, it's been. Give people an update on your life a little bit. <laughs> it's it's been so. good. Um, you know, recruiting's almost basically wrapped up for the year. Um, don't have a whole lot more left to do for this this recruiting trip uh, this year because we are we're pretty much full. It's kind of nice, and uh, yes, naturally you have to throw. Subtle hints, and I'm glad that it won't hang. But uh, nonetheless, it, it's been good. Um, we, we've had a good recruiting year and really excited for the freshmen we're bringing in. Going to be really young. And, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm glad that you just had to put up that sweater because it doesn't obviously want to hang up on your door. I tested this before, and I had no issue with it. And uh -huh. it looks comedically, like, so small right now. Yep. It almost wasn't worth doing, but I'm still so glad I got to do it. It's not worth doing, quite frankly. But here, I'll move the camera closer. No, I don't that, think that we'll... totally fixed it. We're, yep. we're so good. I look so white. My goodness. Yeah. I gotta figure yeah. out the lighting in here still. White white walls. White walls. Blame it <laughs> on the white walls. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh no, it's been good and uh really kind of been a laid back start to my summer. Um from a work bowling standpoint everything else though has been hectic and crazy and i've got paint still under my fingernails and on my fingernails and um can't seem to get it off and <laughs> been painting the house been painting bedrooms and trying to move into a house here soon so i don't envy how much work it sounds like it's uh it's been a lot of work but it's been a lot of fun because you get to do your own little things and and stuff like that, but man, it's been it's been a lot of work. That's uh, will that's there bad. be will there be any race car parts on the walls of your house? I'm currently at an impasse with the relationship about if a race car fender counts as a decoration. Uh, there will not be any parts, mainly because I don't have any parts. However, there will Jenaton, be. Jonathan hasn't sent you any either. No. Jeez, that guy. I couldn't get a t-shirt out of the guy, let alone a car part. Come on. I've got like six extras in my closet. Just yeah. you let me know. Come by yeah, sometime. Exactly. I I'm did like, buy all those. Uh I I've got I've got uh half of half of a bookshelf that will go strictly for race cars. So all the all the die casts that I have laying around here, which is quite a few at this point, will have a home. Let's uh let's get into it. Uh, what we came here to do today, uh, talk a little bit of racing uh, on the dirt tracks, and uh, especially right in our backyard. We're there every week uh, down at Knoxville in the crazy, crazy start to this season they've had. We had Dusty Zomer winning for the first time in not it was nine years in between his last win there and in this one two weeks ago uh, that he won, and then last week Garrett Williamson and Nate Mills in the uh, 360 division for Nate. Uh, they both picked up their first wins in those classes uh, of their careers at Knoxville. Like, I, I can't remember a season with this much parity. And I know we're really, really early, 
And I know there's a lot of uh, beginners luck. Uh, he might have had like one outlier good start and maybe he'll regret, regress back to this mean. But there's a lot of drivers in different spots than where they're used to running uh, at the start of the season so far. Why do you think that is? Why Why is there so many people jumping around spots? Do you think that their programs have gotten just that much better? I, I think that's part of it. I think some drivers you know, have different mindsets as, as your career moves on and you get to a, a different age or you have more skill from doing something in the offseason. Uh, there's obviously the easy answer to a lot of questions in racing is a little bit of everything, right? Um, one big thing is that wicker bow. Knoxville moved from, I believe the rule before was an inch and a half you could allow. It might have been more. I don't, I don't think there was. I can't remember what the original rule at Knoxville was. I just know they moved to the one inch this year. Sorry, I didn't want to misspeak. So shit on me for that one. I didn't know the exact. I don't know the exact number on the rule that the wicker bill was allowed to be uh, before shifting to one inch. But they shifted that after Dusty's went so they had their first two races of the season and then planned to switch they gave everyone a date and said we're going to switch on this day um to align with what the world of outlaws rule is i don't think i talked to a single person in the pits damon and i asked quite a few mm -hmm. asking them if they ran a one inch the week before it sounded like everyone to me was changing and they were already doing that no they weren't doing it until the rule came about gotcha it seemed like everyone was already on. Everyone had to change their wicker bill once that rule came into place. Mm -hmm. And to me, so what wicker bills do is they, you know, it creates kind of dirty air behind you a little bit. And this is something that there's a pro and con of the rule, no matter how you make it, because it's talking about how the car reacts and then how the car behind you reacts to the air that's coming over it. So, when they changed this rule, I know there's some drivers that didn't care a lot, said positive or negative. Glenn Savile came on here and talked about it. I encouraged everyone to go back and listen to that conversation. Uh, and it just cha it changes everything about uh, – it's another thing, I guess, that contributes to how a car handles, how it moves, how the cars behind you move, everything under the roof, right? So – it's going to change the results a little bit and guys are trying stuff. And I, I think that that's the biggest thing that's different this season. That's why I'm spotlighting it as something. And that's probably a bad, uh, bad way to get there. I have a bad mind when it comes to talking about rule changes like that. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's gotta be a major contributor to a little bit of this parody uh, that we're seeing at the very least. Well, and, it, you know, I don't know if you consider necessarily parity, obviously two races. It's also, anyway. I think it's also be, new dirt. I think, yeah, you, you got to talk races. about the the new new surface, but it's still a lot of the same contenders that are still up front. Yeah, just, no, no, the fast guys are still seeing, fast. There's we're just not, not used to seeing, like, Dusty Zomer go out and win a race because he hasn't done it in however long, you know. Or, or Garrett Williamson, you know, that was kind of our story all last year was when is this guy going to win a race? And then here, here he is. So it's, it's not necessarily a quote unquote parody because it's two races in, but it's just new faces that are rising up. I think another year under their belt. Zomer's big boost was Knoxville nationals last year. I mean, that, that was when he, when they really took a big step and, when you make a show, when you make that show of all shows, you're going to get paid and and money. They say money can't buy happiness, but it can buy you a, a 10th place car up to a 5th place car in a hurry. Yeah, and I, I think there's a little bit of that. Um, and that, that goes big into confidence and momentum and everything. I believe very vehemently in uh, both those things. But um, it really goes into... Dusty's set up really well. I, I think Dusty is going to be a contender at this year's Knoxville Nationals. I think he's one of the teams that has weathered the motor shortage that we're seeing. There's some teams that can't get a new motor for another 16 months, Damon. It's crazy mm -hmm. uh, that it's just kind of backed up. And it, it got a little wonky after COVID with, obviously, with the tire shortage we widely talked about. Um, and the, there was 
some engine stuff there, but it was expected to go back to normal and things kind of settled down for a bit. Now it's kind of right back to maybe at a lower point at a uh, bigger issue that it's disrupting these teams. And uh, Kerry Madsen's uh, new team with uh, Vermeer, um, they were unable to race last week and they don't have any motors left. So they're trying to start a new team. They can't find a motor to buy. Like that's an issue, you know? That's that's odd to me as someone who, I, I'll be honest, ha- I haven't had a huge thumbprint on the sport throughout the year. I'll catch a race when I can or catch a, you know, whatever I can uh, when I have the opportunity. But you don't hear about that, I guess. Just as someone who's been, quote unquote, an average race fan right now, or, or someone who isn't like, you know, I don't spend every day in the industry as much as you do. You know, I, I don't spend every Saturday at a local track like you, you get the opportunity to. So you don't hear about it as much because on the national side of things, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a concern yet. It will get there. The tire shortage, again, same the same thing happened there, right? It, it hit the local guys first before it really went on to the national scene. And then when it hit the national scene, that's when it became a really big talking point. I think you could see this uh, kind of taking a similar path. But I, I honestly had no idea that that was even a thing until just now when you said that. Yeah, I got to do a better job of informing Damon. I think we all figured that out now. <laughs> I, I'm bad at texting my friends. I've told you that before. Like, it's just... I like I forget to check up on people. You know what I mean? I'm in. I'm ringing phones for sources from two different beats, and I, you know I get done with the day, and I'm like I texted everyone I needed to text, and I don't think about the people that I like in my life. I, I like my sources too. Don't get that misconstrued. But uh, <laughs> no, it's all that. So we we have this engine shortage and stuff going on, and Justin Henderson drops a bar to me. Uh, in an interview pissed at Brian Brown uh, from an incident between the, those two that sent uh, JJ Hickle and Justin uh, flipping down the front stretch at Knoxville. And understandably, a lot of people asking in, let me, let me get the clarifying stuff out of this real quick before I ask you about what you think. Brian, I asked Brian to do an interview. He didn't want to do one. There was no malicious intent. The reply tweet to Brown did not want to do an interview was for all the people questioning, are you going to go interview Brian? I want to give them that chance. I never want to force anyone to do an interview. He didn't need to leave a response, and he didn't want to, so he didn't. That's it. Uh, the best replay of it, and we posted it on our Twitter feed at Always Race Day, was from uh, Jared at Ascent Media. He had a replay from the drone footage. They did not post any clips from Dirt Vision or the Dirt Vision highlight of it uh, on social media, so... I was a little bit shocked. It seems like every wreck replay gets put out there as long as no one was hurt in the wreck. Um, Obviously both those guys got checked out in the ambulance after the wreck on the front stretch too. Uh, And thankfully both of them. Okay. But I was kind of shocked not to see um, like a real good replay angle of it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's odd, but again, it's, one of those where maybe it's early enough in the year that they just didn't have a good angle for it. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. That camera's typically on that. I, to be fair, I did not go to the Dirt Vision broadcast and check. So it's probably bad journalism on my part. It, it looked like Brian came up in that drone video. Um, and, you know, whether it's there on the broadcast or not now might tell you something, I guess, but I can't imagine right. that it took it away from the broadcast or anything uh, um yeah. It's sort of, yeah it looked like brian came up I, it was a cool I, I thought justin sold more shirts for himself doing that than he would have finishing any spot but first on saturday i'll tell you that yeah that's that's pretty fair um you know he his quote was a a bit and he was he was upset and from from what we've seen kind of rightfully so to an extent, but man, he was, uh, he was hot and his quotes took a, a big turn in the right direction, I guess, for his sake. That's the, that's the thing I feel bad about. Cause sometimes it feels like it's at the expense of somebody. And, you know, I never want to feel like that. I always, I'd rather everybody gets along and everyone's 
fantastic with each other. And every fight is a WWE thing that we all dreamt up in the back. And now we're all actors mm-hmm. and we're, we're pretending someone's Steve Kenzer and the other one's Sammy Swindell. Right. Um, but yeah, it's uh, like, I asked JJ if you want to do an interview after the wreck as well. Um, ask all three guys involved. Right. And JJ said, what, what am I going to say? I'm just fucking pissed. Yeah. And that's, Justin, hey, Justin no, could no, have no, said no. the same thing, but right. I think, you know, I think he did some help for himself. So I, you can, and at the same time now, do you think Brian Brown's going to drive Justin any cleaner after this? Probably way dirtier. Uh, not, so, I don't want to imply that. Sorry, I probably misspoke there. I don't know. I, it's not I don't know. Any easier to race against you. Uh, your competitors, you both want to beat each other. You know what I mean? They're not going to cut each other slack. Is the best way of putting it. That is a much better way of putting it than accusing yeah. a driver of driving dirty before he does it. And I wasn't uh, trying I don't, to accuse. Yeah. Trying to stay as neutral as possible. I don't hate either of these two guys. I like them both. They're both great to us. Got it. I, 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 just, I would say. I don't want anyone commenting like, why do you say this? Because yeah, I answered their, yeah. I would say that they're just not going to cut each other slack. If there's, if there is room for the taking they're going to take it if there's not room for the taking and they try to make room for the taking they're going to take it you know if they have an opportunity to uh to throw a tail tank at a guy they're gonna they're gonna have the opportunity to do that they're gonna have the opportunity they're gonna do that because they race around each other almost all the time it seems like not you know they they're at and these kind of incidents, they generally find a way to start each next the next race right next to each other, or be somehow be pitted right next to each other, or whatever it may be. You know, they'll be having that opportunity to see one another here fairly soon, and uh, we'll we'll have to see how that transpires when it gets here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it sounds like um, it won't be this weekend. Unless Justin has some unknown plans to head east that I don't know about. Brian is heading out, and this is a good segue. Uh, Brian Brown will be at the Port Royal Speedway Saturday and Sunday. It's now a high-limit race, uh, the Bob Weikert Memorial. Um, 75000 to win Sunday night, Port Royal Speedway. I don't know. This is why I mandate two TVs in the living room. It's Coke 600, Weikert Memorial. Mm Mm-hmm both next to each other. It doesn't get any better. My favorite Pennsylvania track. I do take bribes. So if you want yours above Venmo me a dollar and I will get that. That will be my new favorite Pennsylvania track. We can do this all year long guys. Uh, but no, so I'm excited for that race. I, I like having a big time dirt race on Memorial day, Sunday, uh, just it's best day in racing, right? Yeah. Next to the Knoxville nationals. Well, next to national Saturday. Well, we're biased. best day, best day in racing. You, you didn't say certain racing. Best day motor in sport. racing. It's best it's day in motor sport, sport. The sport of racing, not the the theater. The best day in motorsports is is the Sunday before Memorial Day. That is the best day in motorsports. I like it. I I'm really pumped for the entire week and what we possibly could see on Sunday. The biggest thing is. This race was always a little bit, it felt a little bit underrated to me. Uh, I seemed like all these people were talking about it and I needed to watch it, but I hadn't, this is like earlier in my career, but I hadn't like, you know, gone and done research on Bob Weikert. I hadn't, you know, I'm like, why is this one a, a bigger deal than some of these other ones? And I can't tell you which ones I was comparing them to. I didn't know any better. Uh, but I, lo- I love to see it at 75 grand. One of the highest, I think the highest paying sprint car race of the year to date, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, and I, I love the spotlight that high limit has been able to put on. it. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's kind of been their, their whole mojo behind the series to begin with, right? Big money races, big money situations. And uh, this is, this is one of those to start off, you know, what's going to be a, the summer of money. When it comes down to it, a lot of big money races coming up here in the next few months. And uh, this is kind of one of those to get it started. And why not? It's always it's always an intriguing race, to uh, to say the least. 
Yeah, I completely agree. I uh, remember uh, that drive from Anthony Weikert last, or I said Anthony Weikert, Macri uh, last year. And watching that kid at Port Royal, he's definitely going to be a contender. And I think that was even on a prelim. I, I can't even remember if that was the actual race or not. Yeah. Do you remember who won it? I know uh, I just talked about how special this race is, and I don't have the past wins list on the top of my head. Hold on. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure who won it. It's fine. Jeez, we got to have. Oh, here. Poor Earl Lance, Lance. Wasn't it Lance DeWeese that won it last year? Um, that's what, I, that's that's what sounds, I found. That sounds right. That is what I have found. He won it last year. He won it last year based on a oh. a thing from Flow. Hold on. It's Port Royal Speedway says that Anthony Macri won it last year. Well, now who's going to win it last year? I, yeah, no kidding. I think it was Macri. That would make sense. Because he went and back See, this that. shows Macri finishing second, but... That was because wasn't last year twenty twenty three. I I thought so too. Here, this is just I don't know. this is literally the tracks website, but yeah, this is the issue. Why this stuff is hard to find? I yeah, there's there's probably a tab at. I bet you TJ Slideways has a thing on his website. I think Sprint Car Ratings might have it. Dirt Tracker might have it. Mm-hmm. And the third well, turn definitely has it. But regardless, I, you're, yours is saying the opposite of I, opposite people win. I thought it was Macri. I think I really think it is. So at some point here, we're screwing up anyway. Um, but no, I'm I'm excited to see if uh, Posse can take that race again. I know they're eager for some bragging rights, and that wasn't a shot saying they've been slow this year. But how have you liked? Uh, these high limit drivers going in a uh, Jacob Allen one at bats on Sunday, they're racing outside a high limit quite a bit. Uh, and it mm -hmm. seems like they're doing really successful outside of it, which is I, obviously a really good look for your series either way. It's the thing that I've been saying for when the outlaws opened up last year by only by allowing the four events or whatever it was, you know, why or why would you hold your drivers to just that series you know if they want to race let them go race you know that that's that was the the biggest draw you know for for you to use the late model side of it a guy like jonathan davenport goes and runs in every series right he puts he puts butts in seats just by showing up to a racetrack doesn't matter the series it could be a Wednesday night at Hamilton County Speedway in Webster City, and he's going to put people in seats if he shows up there. You know, that there's there's so many things that why would you want to hold your your drivers back? I get it. You want them to be a part of your series. They're going to stay a part of your series. They're still going to travel and do it. But why would you want your drivers to not grow their brand, which essentially is going to grow your brand because it's going to draw more interest? You look back at the year, uh, you look back at 2020 when Larson was running all over the country in that sprint car, right? How many faces did he bring to the world of outlaws because Kyle Larson was winning all over the country? I think he you won know? the Weikert that year. That was one yeah. of his first wins. You know, so the guy the guy brought brought faces to the world of outlaws he brought faces to late models he brought faces to like he's doing right now bringing faces to to indycar that weren't going that to have that opportunity so get your drivers the opportunity to be out there and in, in front of in front of racing and you're going to get more fans out of it you're going to get more people that are going to be interested. I, I couldn't tell you how many people have have said something to me about sprint cars, about late models because of guys like Jonathan Davenport or, or like you mentioned with Jacob Allen going and winning 
back home, running races back home. That that's something that's a promoter's dream, right? Like if you're a promoter of these racetracks or an owner of these racetracks, and you're like, hey, I can bring in high limit star. I can bring in point leader Rico Abreu. I can bring in whatever you know. You and get that's, yeah, and that's, that's why that rule is out there is to make sure that you have to go to a World of Outlaws event or the Knoxville Nationals or the week at Eldora for Kings Royal to see a World of Outlaws driver. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's like the exclusivity makes it worth more, and I think they're afraid that the value would be taken away. I, that's one part of it. Obviously, that it's a complex debate back and forth right and we've we've had it before i wish drivers could race everywhere it'd be cool um it doesn't take away my love for this race or that race or that series or this one just want the best to go up against the best on uh, especially on days when it presents itself so um, that's just it give give your drivers the opportunity if they want to if they don't want to they don't have to we're seeing that as well right we're seeing drivers not go make races or not go run races. Yeah, I think I think this weekend, like you know, twelve of them stayed home. Yeah, took the weekend off. I that could be completely wrong. I could have just missed. But whatever. still, regardless, yeah. like let them go. Let them go run races if they want to in different series. They're still their allegiance lies with whatever series they're a part of. High limit, World of Outlaws, does not matter. Their allegiance lies with that series if they're signed up with that. You know that they know that, but if they want to go run a different series or they want to go run a local track back home, why not? Yeah, absolutely. Um, And what I really want to see at some point this season, especially the, the majors start chirping each other. Just like, Oh, high limit guy won Knoxville. How about that? Everybody. I like we I love moments like that. I think just like Justin Henderson in in that video and why that did well. Go back to Reitzel and go into the mic and uh, get in the microphone at Knoxville and saying boo boo motherfuckers. (laughs) The weirdest line. It shouldn't work. And yet the only driver that that line would ever work for Aaron Reitzel pulls it out and somehow you're like, that's fantastic. We need, you know, keep the moments like that coming. I hope they do a little friendly, friendly rivalry back and forth a little bit with that. But that's what I want to see. You're, you're the guy that likes to, to stir the pot. So you're, I tried to, that fits. It's tough sometimes. I gotta, I gotta be objective. And I, I, I don't like disrespecting people. It's not, I don't like complaining about stuff. I certainly have my complaints. And I have people you I don't like complaining about, about stuff. I don't. I don't like complaining about okay. stuff. Why do, you, do you like complaining about anything? I think that no. makes you. I think that kind of makes you a bad person, Damon. I don't like complaining about yeah. anything. You, on the other hand, love I don't like complain. complaining about anything at all either. Why do you yeah. think I'm complaining about it? Because you like to complain. I, I might complain too much. I don't like to complain. It's a big mm-hmm. difference here. Okay. Well, I'm glad we clarified. You just that. let me sit here and stir my own pot. All right. Yep. That's what I'm going to do. Anyways, uh, I was looking at the World of Outlaws uh, stats graphic they put up, which contains my favorite stat in sports. That is the plus minus, because it means different things everywhere you go, <laughs> uh, and it means it's worth different things to everyone you talk to. Mm-hmm. Uh, the basketball people hate it when I bring it up. That's that well, has yeah, fueled the fire. Because if it's uh, if their favorite player is a minus twenty in the last three games, you're not doing so hot. I agree. It's easily manipulated a little bit, but you really got to be trying to, or he, you got to be in the on the floor at really bad times. Anyways, plus minus stats for the World of Outlaws drivers so far this year, and I will I will attempt before the next. What is Never the done. what is the outlaws plus minus before we dive into it so people aren't confused? That is a that is a good uh, definition we need to give. It's if you you start the race in sixth and you finish fourth, you pass two cars. That's a plus two. So your plus minus would be plus two. If you got started sixth and finished eighth, would be minus two, right? So highest plus minus in the world of outlaws. Donnie shots at plus eighty five. Okay, 
pretty good, right? Yeah, pretty great. good so far this year. Logan Schuhart, plus 80. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then tied for third is Don, uh, Dominic Selzy, Carson Macedo, and Danny Dietrich at plus 30. That is that is an insane gap from you first, know what that, first you know what that second. tells me? You know what that tells me? That Donnie Schatz and Logan Schuhart are not very good at qualifying. That, you know what? That's completely fair. I was going the opposite way and saying they're having good starts to the year. They they are having good starts oh to the God. year. If you if you look at uh, if you I look love at this points, chemistry. Having... I thought this would be only a good news stat. And Damon goes, I think they just suck at qualifying. They very not, true. They're not very good when it comes to the heat races. That's, could be could that, be very true. You, you are uh, you are not missing a beat there. Sure. In all serious, I'm not saying they don't suck yeah. at qualifying either. So yeah. Anyway, it is it is good uh, numbers to start the year. You're 21 races in, and you're plus 85. Um, you're doing something right. I mean, you've only finished. Donnie's only finished out of the top 10 three times this whole year. I should have known we put Logan Schuhart in a stat. You would shit on it. Yep. Your old rival. The oh, okay. You well, had a chance to go face to face with him on this very show, and you declined. You said you that you, out. You okay. you I you Mark Stone that episode. You Mark Stone. You were on vacation, not doing your job, not coming to the rink. Only place you're putting pucks in deep is in the Atlantic Ocean next to Cancun. Yeah, well, I'd much is that the one that's down there. Did I get that geographically correct? I think I'd, I did. I don't know, but I'd much rather be doing that. <laughs> no, no. The Atlantic Ocean, probably not. It should be the Gulf of Mexico, but it, I feel like that's the same water. And it we, could, we can't argue about ocean borders. We're too far into this episode. Yeah, too far. But uh, <laughs> you, you mentioned Logan Shuar having a good year. I mean, he's fifth with no wins. That's, yeah, but what pays your stats? What what pays for a championship? It's the top tens, the top fives. Finish well, he only has eight top fives, and he has 17 top tens. Both are less than Buddy Kofoid, who is who has got one win. That's correct. You look at the top six in the standings right now, 18 top tens. Yep. 18, 17, 19, 17, 18. Then there's a big drop off. Sheldon Hodden Shield has 14 Top tens. He has four wins. That's second highest in the series. Well, he's yeah, designed. he's he's going with the Ricky Bobby mindset. If you ain't first, you're last. He's won four times, second most on the, in the series. I think and looking he's, and he's seventh in points. Looking at all of it, it it's remarkable the start that David Gravel is off to, and I I yeah. think it feels less surprising because he's been there and been so close the last two three seasons. Um, and same with Macedo, he's been like that distant guy right there behind Gravel. And like, I wouldn't be shocked if he was uh, any of those guys in the top seven if they were yeah. dominating the series. But it, 54 point lead in May is pretty, pretty decent, especially it, on it's good. No, it, it's a big size. I also think you know, you're early on, early enough in the year, too, that. It's also not insurmountable. Oh yeah, no, I don't think it's not. it's not insurmountable, and I think that's where, you know, Donnie has eighteen top tens. Like I said, he's only finished outside the top ten three times the whole year. Same with Gravel, for that matter. Yeah, no, crazy. Think, yeah, it's it's a big thing, and you know how you know how big it would be. I being a big Donnie Shots fan that you are, uh, if he. Came through and kept competing. Could you imagine if he wins right. a championship this year? Like that, ex that has to extend his career. I yeah, it, it could. Know? Like it has to. Like like I know he's talked about hanging it up and and going part time or running big races or, and things like that. But you win a championship, that almost has to extend it, right? Uh, it could, it could be the, you know, I just won one. I worked so hard to get it and now I want to retire and, uh, just take a break. Um, yeah. You know, there's that too. It, it could change when the day gets here, you know? So I, 
there has been plenty of Donnie shot speculation over the past 360 days. Right. I try to, I try to stay out of things and I'll, I'll hint at stuff on here. You guys know how I do it, but you don't I, try to stay out of things. Quit lying to yourself. I'm not just spreading false information or rumors. No, but you like to stir that pot. I, I'll stir it. Sure. I don't know if I'll put the spices in there. Is that sure? I think that's okay. You should put the spice in. It'll make your job a lot more entertaining. I, you can't. Yeah, I don't know. I have a problem with pepper in too much anyway. That wasn't supposed to be a joke or anything. I was thinking of a hockey analogy that I think was specific to my friends because people look at me different when I use it all the time. So that just came out. But yeah, I was not insinuating a dirty joke if you had that in your mind, Damon. I didn't actually, to right. be fair. Thank you. Uh, Pepperin is like you talk too much. Yeah. yeah. Yapping, as the kids call these days. Yes. No, my mouth can get me in trouble. It's good. No, we know. Mostly, mostly in like, public at somebody not really i'm kidding um now it's I, i'm excited for the rest of this month and uh specifically this weekend to see uh all these races going on we're recording during the usac sprint car race tonight i, I do need to say logan cv is off to a fantastic start this year again just carrying over from a really momentous 2023 um i'm not surprised at all at that uh and then we didn't mention it, but Kaylee Bryson becomes the first female to win a USAC Silver Crown race over the weekend. Uh, I, I'm mentioning this not to take away from her win, just talk about the race. But Brady Bacon had Damon lapped everyone up to fifth. He had a 15 and a half second lead with like 16 to go, 15 to go, something mm -hmm. like that. And his engine blew. And so Kaylee... Credit to her. She was one of the, the few that weren't lapped. She's ready to go out and win the race, and she went went out and grabbed it. And first female to ever win a Silver Crown race. It's pretty uh, spectacular. As uh, they say, being at the right place at the right time, being lucky is, is better than good sometimes. Yeah, I'd rather be lucky than good any day. Yeah. So, it's way easier. Oh. Getting good takes forever. Lots easier, but no credit to her. She right place, right time, and and take advantage of it. It's not like he blew an engine on the last lap, right? Like it, it was she. She had to earn it, and she did. It's good for her. Yeah, absolutely. You got anything else? I'm uh, I'm pretty content. I think for the most part here. Some uh, some breaking news that just hit Twitter ten minutes ago uh, when we were recording this. Uh, the Slocum 50 is now going to be at Burlington uh, 34 Raceway, um, July 11th, I believe is the date. So turns a 40 lap race into a 50 lap race. They're doing a whole program. They're qualifying hot laps, heat race. I don't know why I went out of order with it. You guys get it. Um, yeah, they, they're, I think they just want a winner for that race. Um, it's typically elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So that, there was a sponsor there originated with the event, um, and I don't know if they're still doing it. Didn't seem like it from the release, but um, yeah, the Slocum 50 uh, is being held in Burlington July 11th. So, we'll probably the only, other, only other thing I wanted to point out, just looking at the late models points for World of Outlaws, is Nick Hoffman is leading that. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's had a great start to the year too. He's really getting settled into that late model and that car. He went and ran, uh, he went and ran a midget uh, yesterday, yep. and yep. then over the weekend, Ricky Thorne Jr. RTJ, uh, yep. he, he was running a stock car. Like I love seeing these guys go to different disciplines. I think that's how um, you get into conversations about who's the best and who has this talent and that talent. And I can name ten guys off the top of my head that have done it in the last month. Gone yep. and gotten into a vehicle or on a different track surface that they're completely, you know, completely different from their primary form of racing. And we'll get into it with the uh, pavement show that comes out on Friday, previewing the rest of the weekend. But um, yeah, that that claim that the uh, the sprint car guy Kyle Larson was just entering the conversation with <laughs> some guy overseas was absolutely egregious to me. <laughs> His second series is a computer, Damon. I have one of those too. Thank cool. goodness. Thank yeah. goodness you have a computer. I compete on the same track he does half the yep. time. Yep. There you go. 
I like this. Good show. You Thank you team. guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate uh, the Carl Auto Group. Uh, we'll be back next week. We're going like one show a week on both sides now, and we're just logistics have been fun to figure out in in the game plan around. So we'll be back. Appreciate y'all. We'll be back with you throughout the summer weekly. Um, can't wait to uh, see what the rest of the season what we're in store for the rest of the season. How about that? Thanks again, y'all. Appreciate it.